evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the April 30th, 2013 meeting of the Glendale City Council being called to order at 6.02 p.m. We have a roll call. Council members, Friedman? Here. Jarian? Here. Quintero? Here. He's here from the back. Tananian? Here we are. Here. Here. Our flag suit tonight will be led by Councilman Sananian and Okay, next. Next is oral communication. Uh, this is a five minute portion. Discussion is limited to items not part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. Council may respond question or respond to a speaker, but there'll be no debate or decision. City manager may refer the matter to the appropriate department for investigation and report. Okay. This is becoming new to me. Uh, one, two, Two cards this time they don't want to give their last name or their address. So just Tori. May I ask what city you live in? Good, thank you. Your first name for the record. Tori. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Council Members, my name is Tori. I'm sorry, this is the first time I've done something like this. Oh, relax. It's a <laughs> Uh, I have come here today to speak on behalf of those hurt with, uh, by Mr. Sinyanian's uh, online comments, but more importantly about the significance of the diversity in Glendale. I have been a resident of Glendale for over four years. I am a Marine Corps Special Ops disabled veteran, a civil servant, a single parent of two children, and a proud member of the LGBT community as a transgender woman. Like most members of any mar marginalized community, I have spent a good portion of my life experiencing the challenges faced by anyone who cannot leave their home without facing people filled with hate for who they are. I've sat back as a silent observer, hoping and waiting for either the council, mayor, or Mr. Sinyanian to do the right thing. All I've seen and heard were people dismissing the severity of his actions and what it has done to our community, telling us that we should just move on and sweep it under the rug because he was elected albeit by people who either condone his behavior or were not made aware of it uh, at the time he was elected. The most important aspect to society and culture is diversity. Without diversity, be it religious, economic, cultural, racial, or gender, new ideas and concepts would not be introduced. Society would stop evolving, stop learning, and stop progressing. Often society breeds pockets of individuals who share the same beliefs. When these groups segregate themselves from the di diversity present around them, and become dismissive of the other groups, misinformation and hate can overwhelm common sense, and behaviors like those shown by Mr. Sinyanian occur. In these instances, empathy for, to others is lost because others are seen as outsiders. This is the seed to ignorance, hate speech, and bigotry, and this is what we as society must work against. All people from all walks of life are both capable of great good and significant evil. From my experience, it is those who have sought an understanding of the diversity of humanity to be the ones who truly seek to avoid behaving with evil dismissiveness and evolve towards becoming empathetic, open-minded, and caring humanists. An elected official is charged with serving the entire community, with demonstrating respect for everyone they serve. We should expect them to aspire to be role models when it comes to diversity. We should expect them to be the first to step up and avoid using hate speech towards any group, but particularly those most marginalized and thus the easiest of targets. We need to expect more from our leaders. Ignoring an individual's past public declarations which are hateful without immediately and harshly condemning them serves only to teach our next generation that such behaviors are acceptable without consequence. Mr. Sinyanian, you recently admitted being the author of some vile online postings, but it was a self-gratifying explanation, particularly given that our own mayor and others seem to praise you for coming clean, as if somehow dismissed entirely just how vile and hurtful what you wrote had been. Your actions would lead to the firing of any Glendale employee per the city code of ethics. Why you are held to a lower standard of conduct than any other civil servant. What precedent is set by you remaining in office? What message is the council giving to the Muslim, Latino, Turkish, and LGBT communities about what the consequences are when a public servant fails to make sincere efforts to evolve away from a divisive mindset? Mr. Sinyanian, I ask you to consider what steps you could now take now be taken to heal the schism you have, your words have caused within our community. You speak of the good intentions you have for our future as a community, but actions speak louder. How do you think your past actions reflect on your stated intentions to better our community? 
You are the source of a great strife in our community today, and, I've, and have shown little sincere willingness to heal that rift. At this point, your continued presence in our local government will only further increase that rift, no matter what you otherwise may intend. I have plenty of faults. I've made many mistakes in my life. I like to think that I've used them as a learning experience for personal growth and evolution towards becoming a better individual. Despite the pain your words have caused me and those I care about, and despite the shame your words have brought to the city I love, I forgive you. But forgiveness does not mean freedom from consequence. And so I believe that the community would best be best served by your resignation or by the council dismissing you for cause. Barring those outcomes, at the very least, I hope you will instead use these experiences as an opportunity to inspire great acts of tolerance and acceptance towards the diverse communities within Glendale and elsewhere. I hope one day you will be an outspoken leader regarding what you have learned about the hurt your actions have caused and the shame you have caused our city and your beautiful family. I hope this humbles you and that this ends up being a lesson to anyone who might be tempted to replicate your actions to think twice before doing so. You have an opportunity now to prove your good intentions you spoke of, and I hope you will not waste it. Thank you. Thank you for coming, Tori. Any comments? Okay, next speaker, Gray James. Uh, Gray James Glendale, eternally nervous. That's how it's done, sir. Uh, Mr. Sinanian, I was just getting comfortable here. I had plans. I had a speech. You did a lot of damage, Mr. Sinanian. You hurt a lot of people. You blamed a lot of other people for your actions. I wrote this quickly. Uh, you blamed them for your actions, and your election was about lies and fraud. Tonight, I will give you the gift of taking you at your word more than you've earned. Uh, I still would like to show the slide that I s this. I still would like to show this slide that started this, but by no means ended it. Hang on. Okay. There you go. This is the slide that started this, but by no means ended it. These are your words, Mr. Sinanian. Mr. Mayor, you allowed for this. Both of you were willing for this to be the acceptable voice of Glendale. Shame on you both. Mr. Sinanian, I hope tonight is just the beginning. I don't want to be here. You don't want me here. Let us both get our wish. Next speaker is James, Jamie, 91203. I was here last week and spoke out against Mr. Sinanian's hideous, bigoted, and offensive comments on YouTube. Again, I ask for either a recall or that Mr. Sinanian step down or be removed for his conduct. I find it deeply disturbing that Mr. Sinanian has been hailed a role model for admitting that he posted such, abhor such abhorred comments after the election, after dodging, deflecting, and avoiding responsibility when originally confronted once a Google Plus account and IP address was, I understand, linked to his account, after continually blaming Laura Friedman, which his supporters continue to do even as recently as last week. Um, and um, Mr. Sinanian was waiting for this man um, when we were approached. Um, and I do believe that it's very possible that Mr. Sinanian would not have been voted in if his supporters knew of these comments. I, I really don't believe that the Armenian community that I know, the people that I know, would not have voted anyone in if, he had, if they had known of these comments. And I ask, Mr. I ask Mayor Weaver, to read aloud these comments unedited um, for the viewers at home and here in chambers. And with all due respect, if you are not comfortable conveying Mr. Sinanian's words, then I ask you in all sincerity, why is he able to represent the people, all of the people, all of the people of Glendale, if his words are too reprehensible to repeat? 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Karen Carlson. My name is Karen Carlson, and I'm a child psychotherapist. And although what I do for a living informs what I'm going to say, I'm here as a citizen not representing the organization that employs me. I appreciate your efforts to grow and change, Mr. Sinanian, evidenced by your words tonight. And I know from my work and life how painful that growth can be. I was shown an online version of this meeting by a young person, and later the same person sent me the posted remarks of Mr. Sinanian. Last week I attended my first meeting to listen. We live in a linked up world, and even if they're not seated here, our tech-savvy kids are in the audience, they're watching, and they see how we treat one another, and everything we put online will be archived forever. Mr. Mayor, your little granddaughter Eden will one day be able to see how her grandpa tried to silence Gray James on May 16th as she courageously tried to exercise her civil, civic rights. And Mr. Sinanian, your child's future in-laws who may live in Sweden or Australia will one day be able to read those regretful words that you posted. We're playing for keeps here. Um, gay people have suffered a genocide also. The word faggot refers to a stick of wood used to burn people at the stake for their difference. The pink triangle, like the yellow star, was a way to mark gay people for murder during the Holocaust, a series of events that used the Armenian genocide as its blueprint. Reparative justice turns the focus from you and your own tribe toward the others, the people that you've injured. And I invite you, Mr. Sinanian, to start with your own wife and ask her how this painful journey was for her. And um, then to contact the injured people who've had the courage to come forward in this room. I know there are others, you know, rape trauma survivors that heard what you said about rape and other people that can't come forward, but it's a good start to start with the people that have come into the chambers. Asking Mr. Kasabian, what can I learn from you that will help us move forward as a team Ms. James, what ways do I need to keep growing so I can better represent your interests? Ms. Jamie, how can you and I co-create a city where you'll be safe giving your full name? And when you don't know what to do when confronted with difference, a great safe default move is simply to show respect. It's my wish that we don't push this issue away, but that we keep our individual and collective mistakes ever in mind as we press on to make a rich, diverse, and textured city that includes everyone, because our children have our best and worst moments always at their fingertips. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? What's next, please? Is there any new business? No. New business? Do adjourn. We are adjourned, sir. And a second.